All right, now that we have our uh, store data, um, our store table created and our supplier table created, um, we don't need this SQL code anymore. So like I said, I'm gonna copy this and save this into an extra file. So that way I have this available to me and I am going to delete it. And now what I wanna do is I wanna be able to um, insert data into both of the store table and into the um, supplier table. Now inside um, the, the file that I've given you, there is information regarding the supplier table and the store table. All right, so I'll walk you through that, but I'm going to probably cheat a little bit. I'll probably copy some information in. Now, what I want to share with you is that um, to keep things rather simple, if you remember before we used the insert into function and we had um, wanted to select table underscore, in this case, it's going to be store. Okay, and now we're going to want to list um, all of the um, all of the fields that are in that particular um, table. So one way to be to confirm that is to expand out the table and look at each of these. So we know that it's going to be the store ID, et cetera, et cetera. So I actually have that available, and I am going to copy that and paste that into my SQL script because we've gone through this once already. And so you should understand how this information is put in. All right. And I'm actually going to put um, at the end of this, I'm going to go ahead and put a go. And the same thing is going to be with my insert supplier or uh, into my table supplier. Now, I noticed one thing that I did with my uh, particular Table creation is that if I come over here on the left, my table supplier here is not in all caps. However, if you notice what I copied here is in all caps, and I need to make that change. This has to match exactly to the way that things are spelt. So I'm going to insert into, it's going to be TBL underscore uh, supplier. There we go. Now, this is going to insert data into each of those tables. And as I mentioned before, this data is already available to you. You just need to type it out and go ahead and put that into your SQL script. So with that, I'm just going to execute this. And it looks like everything has been affected. We can see that it's been a successful completion here. All right, so this data has been included into the data set. Now, one way of verifying that is kind of what I did before, right? I'm just going to do a... Uh, select uh, star from and I'm going to list all my tables this time I'm going to do from table uh, underscore pet I'm going to do um, select star from TBL underscore store and the last one we do is select star from tbl underscore supplier yeah i'm just gonna hit go all right i'm gonna execute all this make sure that stuff is lined up and we can see here what our results are are going to be we have actually data in all three of our tables all right so that's excellent if we've gotten that far we're doing really well now the last thing that we have to do is create what's called a foreign key constraint and let me kind of explain how that works. So all of these tables currently have data into them, but they're not connected. And let me show you a picture of how that, how that plays out. Now we can go to our database diagrams, and if you haven't done so, you could try to expand it. But I'm gonna right click on database diagram, and I'm gonna create a new database diagram. And with this, it's going to ask us, what tables do we want to add? And I'm going to basically select all three of them and hit Add. Okay, once everything is completed, we can hit Close. And we can see here is a ER diagram of our particular uh, data tables. Now, what we don't see is the connections between all three data tables. However, I will tell you, if you look right down here in the pet table, 
we have pet supplier name, which is supposed to connect us here to the supplier supplier name. And we have what's in the pet table, the store ID, which is supposed to connect here to the store ID. So we need to use some SQL script to create the constraints that connects all of these tables. So later when we run join statements, all of this will be connected. All right. So here's how we do this. Let's go back to our uh, SQL queries. And I am going to delete everything. And I'm going to just kind of move this down just a little bit. And let me show you what is in here. Now, I do provide you with this particular script inside of our assignment. Uh, but let's go ahead and write this in as well. So for now, and of course, you may not have all of this in your head. But let's type alter table which is basically a way of editing the table the table that we're going to edit is going to be called is going to be the pet table so alter table pet we're going to add a constraint and we're going to call this foreign key underscore pet store and basically this is going to be the pet stores um, connection to uh, the, the pet table and then we're going to call it a foreign key. Make sure we spell that right. I before E, except after C, except, expect, except in the word foreign. Uh, there we go. Key. And the foreign key is actually in the pet store. It'll be store ID. And it's going to reference what's in the store, the, the store table which will end up becoming the store underscore store ID. Okay, so you can see what's happening here. I also spelt this incorrectly. Uh, that's references is what I'm supposed to include there. Now it turns blue, so I know that is correct. So um, we can see here we have, we're gonna alter the pet table. We're gonna add the foreign key pet store constraint and basically, we're going to say the foreign key is going to be the pet store ID, which is actually in our is in our pet table. And it's going to reference the store ID in the store table. Okay, so that's how how it's how it's connecting together. Now, we can't do this if we haven't created the tables yet, right? And we can't do this if the values aren't there or the columns aren't there. So like you can see here that in the pet table, we have the store ID. And in the store table, we also have the store store ID, which is right here. And so that's how those connections are made. So I'm going to go ahead and execute this. And everything happened successfully. Now we're going to do the same thing, not just with um, the pet store, but also the supplier. So we're going to still alter the pet table, but this time we're going to call this foreign key uh, is going to be between the pet table and the supplier table. And the foreign key this time inside the pet table is going to be the supplier name. And the one that is in the table supplier, right, is going to be the supplier underscore supplier name. Now I'm checking here. Let me expand here on the left. I want to make sure that everything is spelled properly. So I have to make sure that the tables that I'm referencing, which is one here, which is one here, is spelled the same. Also, I need to make sure that here this is the pet table, supplier name, pet table, supplier name. That's referenced properly. And this one here from the supplier table, supplier table. So th this is also spelt the same way. All right, I'm going to go ahead and execute that and see if I have any errors. No, I don't. All right, so that's perfect. So now let's come back to our diagram here, and I am going to left or right click on it. And I am going to, uh, well, actually, I want to refresh everything. And it is 
it is not there yet. So actually, probably the best thing to do here is simply to close this out and it says, do we want to save our changes? I'm going to say no. And this time I'm going to come back up to database diagrams and create a new day, a new di a new diagram, excuse me, select everything, hit add, close. And now we can see that all of our relationships have been created. Now I probably didn't need to go through all those steps, but I did in this particular case. Now, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to reorganize these tables. You can simply click and drag these around a little bit, and that's that way you can kind of get them in a view that's comfortable for you. All right, so we're going to continue the lab and finish it up in the um, next particular um, video. Thank you.